Welcome to GBG. We're continuing on with the Little Bunny Horror Game. And we starting episode 2 of the game. So this game is um, still in relaunching. Uh, there are so far there are two parts you can play of the estimated 5. So I'm uh, really looking forward to the second one. Maybe we'll get some more idea of what's going on and what's happening. Because so far... I really liked part one, but I have no clue what's going on. So, warning, game isn't suitable for children or easily disturbed, so you know what to do if you tick one of those boxes. New school, new teachers, and most importantly, new classmates, who I always have trouble connecting with. Like most other kids with glasses, probably. I force myself to get out of my warm bed. That would usually drive me to my old school, but this morning the bedroom of my parents was silent. Did they sleep in? Maybe it was a good thing, I didn't want to get the daddy's boy reputation from day one. My parents were probably still tucked in, dreaming about the good old days when everything was so simple and easy. Sweet dreams, even if far removed from reality. I silently sneaked out the first floor, so I wouldn't wake up anybody, especially the peacefully sleeping Olya. I did my best to step on the middle of every floorboard. I used to play like this, even in our old apartment. If my souls touched the space between floorboards, it counted as stepping into lava. The clock was spurring me on with his hands. I need to hurry, faster, faster! I was so fast. Too fast, so I needed to circle the hallway once again. Boiling lava was bursting out of the cracks between floorboards. It needed to watch my step to survive at any cost. Hippity hop like a frog jumping on molehills, like a fearful bunny in a grove full of wolves. I made a sandwich in the kitchen, shoved it down my throat and drank it down with cold tea. My appetite was as good as of someone being led up the scaffold toward a guillotine. I lowered my gaze and saw that one of my feet was standing on two floorboards at the same time. Burn to a crisp, huh? I moved my foot. Disgusting little snakes rithered in my belly, the fear of getting hit and being called nasty names. The clock clicked. I need to go. It was dark outside, fitting for an early winter morning. This darkness never fully left the houses around here. I took my time tying up my shoes, buttoning up the buffy down jacket, trying to delay my unpleasant exit into the semi-dark, into the unnerving unknown. I rubbed my glasses for good luck, though I couldn't remember a single time these thick pieces of glass brought me any good fortune. The sky was aching to a giant bruise. On the east side of it, a black cloud was welling up. It licked up stars from the sky and extinguished the rising sun. Darkness was plastered all over the treetops. The cautious cries of birds got tangled up in the thicket. I locked the front door with a long key that I wore around my neck. My parents made me wear these noose, afraid that I, being a total clutch that I am, could lose the key otherwise. The wind whisked on the other side of the gate. It invited me to my new life, toward dubious adventures and tagged along like an old buddy pushing me in the back. White shadows that pines threw out covered a third of the clearing. Upon reaching the edge of the forest, I hid my nose in the coat's collar. I was squeezing through the thin fire break, my hair ruffled up and my back hunched over. Tall trees stood on both sides of the tiny trail. A snowy blanket rustled under my feet and the canopy of intertwined branches above my head cut me off from the already sparse starlight. The night had no plans of moving away from the forest. In this darkness, Tree reminded me of a shaggy old woman that smelled of burial earth. Their trunks turned into cracked, wrinkled faces with holes in the middle as their mouths. If I lost focus even for a moment, mold-covered witches would drag me into the forest depths. And then my parents would be walking around these parts, screaming my name but the dead can't answer the living. Or can they? A sense of panic was growing in my chest. 
I was fine with Dad carrying me, carrying me into the school in his hands by now if it saved me from watching the darkness rise up and the ravines like black dough. It felt like someone jumped into the bushes behind me so I turned around. As soon as I started walking faster I heard the snow squeak behind me. The forest took a deep breath with its giant lungs. The windfall cracked. The wind and the birds were left behind in the fields. Now I could only hear the forest creak. I walked, listening closely, and the unseen presence grew stronger. As if someone was following me, trying to match the pace of my footsteps. I turned my head so fast it made my neck crunch. A tiny trail behind me disappeared into the darkness. Three branches overlapped, forming a natural tunnel. The question escaped my lips and dissolved into the unending creaking sound of the wooden idols, the pines around me. Why did I think going through the forest alone was a good idea? I'm either going mad, or someone has intentionally lured me away from home. Distant lights grant me a smidge of hope. The country road. I ran there as fast as I could, as if afraid the trail will shrink, clawed hands will grip me by the shoulders, turn me around and make me look at the faces of hungry forest denizens. In the end, nobody stopped me. I almost flew to the decrepit wooden bridge, disbelieving my luck. The bridge's support bathed in a spring, terry and ice cold. I put my hands on my knees and looked up at the forest, then snorted, cry trying to calm my breathing. The thicket was pretending to be asleep. It looked peaceful, lifeless. The remaining part of my commute lied through a snow laden road, illuminated by sparse lamplights. I chased away bad thoughts and ran as fast as I could from one circle of light to another, seeking protection from electric lamps. Just like in that game where you need to be the first to proclaim I protect it. Which game? Tag, a kid's game where one player needs to tag other players. Yes, that game. It's just in this case that protection was flimsy at best, with darkness writhing outside its bounds. Then I noticed something remarkably eerie. In a place where the light from an inclined lamp couldn't reach, a hairy crooked shadow came alive with a guttural roar. It almost felt like its features deterred light, its unnatural pose instilled fear. My eyes almost popped out of their sockets as I just stood there, blinking, trying to chase away that illusion. The shadow didn't disappear and got even closer. My insides were gripped by horror. I stepped back and almost fell into a snow pile. Black Silhouette, on the other hand, straightened up and addressed me in a sweet voice. Words got stuck in my throat. Who could be talking is such a silky voice here between the forest and the dormant village? A girl stood before me, judging from the voice and the silhouette. But I couldn't even reprimand myself for getting scared by a girl before noticing a gaping mouth under her hood with something dangerously shiny inside. I was stunned. From the cavity of her hood, a frighteningly real fox face was staring straight at me. It's just her jaws weren't moving and her eyes weren't blinking. A mask. It's just a girl with a fox mask on. At least I wanted to think that. After a surprise like that, the nervous smile involuntarily crept onto my face. I just go to school, and here you are. What? I've never seen a dog eat a dog. And indeed, there was a small dog circling the girl's legs. One of the strays that were chasing me yesterday, probably. Sorry, I didn't want to. After hearing my voice, the dog whimpered, lowered its ears and sniffed me out and then started wagging its tail. I guess I still smelled of bologna that I ate for breakfast. I was shifting my gaze back and forth from the dog to the girl. She didn't seem scary anymore, just weird. 
Ну-ну. Как тебя зовут? Меня Антон. А тебя? А меня нет. She's weird. Definitely has a couple of screws. A couple of loose screws. But she has a nice voice. My astonishment has turned into a mix of happiness and relief. This girl I didn't know was definitely human, if a bit eccentric. I was also a bit angry at myself. This foxy girl was walking through the darkness without problem and I shuddered from every little sound. I could just walk away, but this girl has piqued my interest. The next time a police officer asks me about my friends at the new place, I'll tell him that I befriended a talking fox. <laughs> the fox giggled and purred. She spun around so hard the hem of her coat lifted up. Нет, глупый. Лисы не живут в поселках. Хочешь сказать, ты живешь в лесу? Из какой норы ты вылез? Конечно, лисам среди людей не выжить, пока они лисы. Her jokes were also weird. Just like her calling for mask, papier mache with fur glued onto it. A dog reminded us of its existence with a loud bark. I unfastened my backpack. Dad would sometimes throw food in there without my knowledge, cookies, apples, or even my favorite crab sticks. He called it a gift from the bunny. And now what's with the bunny? The uneaten part of a business lunch or a treat specifically bought for children. Okay. The stray strolled toward me with mincing footsteps, with a pleading look in his eyes. The fox had definitely retreated to something, but it was probably still hungry. Зачем ты так вырядилась с утра пораньше? На утренник идешь? The girl shrugged, throwing silvery snowflakes over her nose, and her human form along with them, turning into a genuine beast. A real fox, agile, cunning, dangerous. A moment of hesitation and you'll be ripped to shreds. She'll tear you up and gulp you down without breaking a sweat. I couldn't help but just stand there as a stump. Until I heard her call melodic laughter hidden underneath the beastly mask. Видел бы ты свою маску, сладенький. Sweet. She just says, sweetie. I got embarrassed, went right up to my hair roots. We'd seen a fox in the zoo once when we went there with Dad, but it had patchy fur, was grey and skinny. But this girl was a fiery colour and furry, just like in fairy tales. I was still rummaging through my backpack. My fingers that were searching for a dog street stumbled upon some soft crumbled object. Ничего. Скоро проснутся настоящие звери. Спроси-ка лучше у них, где они взяли свои человеческие лица. The girl's shadow was dancing in the lamp's light. The dog yapped in agreement. I freaked out and dropped my finding in the snow without getting a proper chance to examine it. Cold wind instantly covered the hole it created with snow. The dog rushed to dig it out, wanting to get it straight. And the fox just snorted. Now I was so embarrassed I wanted to sink through the snow. It was still dark outside of the electric circle. On the contrary, the darkness seemed even more thick. All neighboring houses were sleeping deeply in its ickiness. I did my best to continue the conversation with the weird girl I didn't know. Так ты в школу идешь? Ах, ну какой же дурачок! Так ничего и не понял! I was trying to be friendly, but she can't stop mocking me, calling me a dummy and all. I should have just moved along without paying any attention to this weirdo and her stupid dog. А ты чего обзываешься? Не хочешь отвечать, пожалуйста. Никто не требует. Still, something froze me in place, tug me towards the dog figure. A mysterious appearance, her voice that was velvety and just languid enough. I was intrigued and excited. I watched her as people watch Faris burn. Ой, да не дуйся! Гляди-ка лучше. Ты нравишься жульке? The dog was digging through snow with sharp movements, snoring loudly. 
The fox turned around and looked at the windows of nearby houses, at its timbered front through the white mist. The tip of her fake nose was shining under the lamp's light. I went red again, like a boiled crayfish this time. Is she talking about herself or someone else? I hoped that the semi-dark would be able to hide my embarrassment from the girl. <coughs> I cleared my throat before asking. I waited, counting my heartbeat. The fox didn't reply. Her sly stare was scanning the frosty patterns of someone's windows. She was reading them like a glass book. I wonder what she can see in those winter paintings. The stray stopped rummaging through the snow. It ran to me, holding my object in her jaws. A mitten. Could it be the one I found in the forest? What is it doing here? When I looked closer, I realized that it was just my mitten. Maybe mom stuffed it in there when I was asleep. A certain missing boy immediately came to mind. Hey, ты знаешь что-нибудь про Вову? I imagined the scene, silhouettes dancing in the clearing. The dance on the night when Vava disappeared. A boy who, when found, can provide a big reward, reward and maybe save my family. I remembered my birthday when our parents promised to take me and Olya to Disneyland in Paris. But instead of a long anticipated gift, they gave me a simple brick game console, visibly embarrassed. I was crying my eyes out back then, demanding to take me to the promised amusement park. That was the first time when mom and dad had a big fight. My greediness shattered their relationship. If only I could fix everything, gather everybody I love and take them to Disneyland. В ночь, когда пропал Вова, я, кажется, видел, как кто-то похожий на тебя плясал под моим окном. It couldn't be true, but I felt like her mask became, became even more sly. The fox was sniffing me out. А что? Ты тогда испугался? За себя или кого-то еще? Oh yeah, as soon as I thought about my sister, my chest tightened and cold sweat streamed down my spine. Ну так слушай меня внимательно, мальчик по имени Антон. Это большой и страшный лес. The fox girl stepped forward menacingly. И я не единственный его обитатель. Другие звери уже знают о тебе. Берегись нас. Этой ночью... I shouldn't have talked to this evil and child for my thoughts panicking. Видел он меня ночью у своего окна. Ага, как же! А ты случай не местный дурачок, нет? Меня не отпускают гулять так поздно. Здесь, знаешь ли, дети пропадают. I touched the plastic frame of my glasses, puzzled by her silly joke. She got me scared to death. Ой, да не тереби ты окуляры свои. Я раньше тоже близорукой была. Лучше послушай меня. Может быть, ума наберешься. Лисичку как обычно называют? П Плутовка? My words seem to hurt her. <гас> Ох ты ж! Да как ты меня... Ой, прости. <гас> her laughter was aching to the jingle of a pair of silver bells. <гас> да шучу я! Конечно, плутовкой. Если ты ловкий и смелый, не боишься с плутовкой водиться, я так и быть помогу разыскать этого Вову. Ты же неспроста его ищешь, да? I shrugged in reply. Her insight was alarming. Знаю, почему дети повадились соваться в наш лес. Порой там можно найти много всякого интересного. Я вот однажды нашла целый сугроб конфет и купалась в нем. Да так что челюсть слиплась. A pile of candy. I couldn't deduce whether she believed in what she was saying from the tone of her voice. 
I showed her another smile, a fake one this time. Посмотрите, как какой недоверчивый. Ну, ну, а что ты на это скажешь? She held out her hand in the furry mitten. There was an assortment of sweets in her palm. In the city where I used to live, sweets like these were sold at the markets or in kiosks. Let's check out the kiosks. Small container type shops selling a wide assortment of products from bubblegum to vodka, clothing or even home appliances. These types of shops were popular in the 90s in Russia and more often than not tied to criminal organizations. I saw my favorite bubblegum in a vivid wrapper among the tasty treasure. A familiar name was it? Was on it. Turbo. A triangular fox face poked her nose toward me. Ugaishaisa! У меня их полные карманы. Something would never take candy from strangers. Hmm. Mm, which one should I take? Um, take a candy. I accepted the treat and catching a whiff of the girl's smell. Fur, fireworks and citrus. The smell of holidays. My fingers tingled while I was carefully unwrapping the gum. Peachy aroma entered my nostrils and something else, something unfamiliar but pleasant. The fruity cube ended up in my mouth. I started moving my molars, chewing the gum. It tasted like your usual Turkish gum, only my tongue went a little numb. I couldn't believe my luck after opening the insert. <laughs> and the insert, as in you want something, bubblegum insert, games. Type of game where players put bubblegum inserts into their palm and try to flip it. We're often considered as collectibles. I looked at a Mercedes-Benz, an extremely rare and hence desirable collector's item for any boy from my previous neighborhood. My heart skipped a beat. I was barely able to tear my eyes off the insert, still stunned. А представляешь, что с тобой будет, если найдешь чемодан таких фантиков? Голову напрочь снесет и пиш. Unusual treats, just like everything else about her. I carefully hid the insert in my bag as if I was putting a red butterfly in a can. The fox giggled. This is not how things are supposed to go on Monday morning. Who are you? I refrained from asking that question, she wouldn't answer any may, or she'll just lie. I really wanted to see what's behind her mask. I was becoming more and more sure that underneath it wasn't just a simple young girl. Может, Вова тоже нашел сугроб сладости и теперь кувыркается в нем? Слушай, вдруг он решил остаться в лесу? Тогда, наверное, ему очень холодно в одной варежке. The wind caught her words like smoke from a fire and carried them deep into the darkness, into the creepy thicket. The trees behind me creaked with their bony branches. Или с ним что-то случилось в пути. Что-то страшное. The forest reacted to her words, became alive. It sniffed me out, perking up its ears, just like a curious beast. The fox girl pierced me with her eyes again. Дикие звери? Это по-твоему страшно? Ну, не знаю. Не знает. Уж не с двоечником ли я подружилась? I didn't like being called dunce, yet being friends with her sounded nice. Я хорошист. Билда пушист. Пойдешь со мной, хорошист Антон? Найдем твоего Вову и сам его спросишь, что он нашел в этой пуще. Ведь пока мы вместе, никто тебя в лесу не тронет. Вот увидишь. Worms of worry written in my belly. Better run, whispered my mind. Я тебе не верю. Ты думаешь, я врунья? Да 
Ой, пожалуйста, мне никогда никто не верит. The girl sounded hurt, although I didn't know if she was genuine about it. She turned round as if she had immediately lost all interest in me. The gum felt bitter now. I remember my dad's favorite saying, Where are your manners, son? Indeed, this fox was kind to me. Не обижайся, пожалуйста. Лисы бывают и добрыми. Ну, как в сказках. Мне бы только понять, что ты за лиса. The girl giggled, hiding the nose of her mask in her hands. Тогда пойдем со мной в лес, и ты все обо мне узнаешь. Но не сейчас, а когда рассветет. А то тебя бедного всего аж потрехивает. Да выгляди, кондрашка хватит. Айда, провожу тебя до школы. After hearing this, the dog barked in agreement and stopped messing with the mitten. I leaned in, trying to grab the piece of hand where that almost ran away from me. Ну, если тебе по пути. We went towards the school and lost Dom. Here and there, the lights came on in the windows of houses we passed, as if their inhabitants were sending us warning signs. Silhouettes lurked behind curtains, dogs let out occasional barks. Spirals of grey smoke rose from chimneys, TV bustled and dishes clanged in the kitchens. We watched the villa slowly rise from its slumber by carefully threading the snow, the snowy wheel trails. I walked in the left one and she took the right one. The dog was following right behind us. I expected the fox to bring up something weird again, but she stayed silent all the way to school, as if playing with me some game only she was privy to. She would only giggle from time to time when the dog sneezed from the snowflakes that fell on its nose. I was the first to break the silence. Так как тебя зовут? А, ну конечно. Имена, имена, имена. Людям непременно надо вешать ярлыки на все подряд. Ну и как бы ты назвал такую лесу, как я? Даже не знаю. Но я читал про лесу по имени Алиса. А что? Я не против. Пусть будет Алиса. I couldn't understand if she was joking or not. I turned around as if looking for an answer from the dog from the dark sky devoid of doubt. My silent questions were left unanswered. The school's outline was already in our sight, a giant brick box stuck in the endless night. Lights in its windows didn't bode well for me. The warden trees were guarding the schoolyard. Screams, childish laughter and someone's whistling tore up the silence. I went here with my mom when we just moved and the place looked cozy at that time. Empty corridors that smelled of polish, puffy snow outside. The second time I came alone to get the books and just kept on imagining my peers, rolling down the railings, grade scorers, running the library, and teachers marching down the corridor with the air of self-importance around them. High scorers were smoking at the entrance in track pants and wool caps, perched on their foreheads. Their appearance destroyed the last of hopes for a cozy school. Their stingy eyes and feet, yellow from nicotine, their smirks, all of it had the same gloomy effect as the cloudy winter morning. Absorbed by my thoughts, I completely forgot about my companion. После уроков жду тебя на заднем дворе. Возле повешенного. Возле кого? She just ignored my question. Не опаздывай. I hesitated. Blowing hot and cold again. Mom always said that when I would have trouble choosing between two two options. Thinking about mom helped me reply. Я после школы сразу домой. Эх, Антоша, Антоша, это я тебя так просто отпустила. Другие же незаметно подкрадутся со своими улыбочками и вцепятся. Клеща меня оторвешь. Попомни мои слова. The fox opened her mouth in a wide yawn. What kind of trick is this? Someone's running in the distance called out my name. I instinctively turned around. A huge snowball whisked past my shoulder and hit the dog. It whimpered and ran toward the spring. The darkness devoured it. The fox girl was also nowhere to be seen. She dissolved into frosty air. Or was she hiding in my shadow? I gulped and swallowed the gun. Unlucky. 
After taking a deep breath, I went toward the school, toward the cutlets and dough, toward the light raining down into the snow. Let's enter the school in the next video. So, interesting part one of chapter two with an interesting fox girl who seems real but still not real with a mask. Not sure what to think of this, but anyhow, let me know in the comments below. If you like this, be sure to press that thumbs up if you did. And if you're not subscribed already, think about smashing that subscribe button with a little bell icon to stay in the loop. Stay healthy and safe, and I hope to see you in the next one.